so hey everybody what's going on my name is terry welcome back to the channel hope you guys and gals are doing well so look i was debating on putting this on my main channel or starting a whole new channel for this type of uh, content but many of you might not know this out there but i actually got my start on youtube years ago not doing tutorials for obs streaming photoshop anything like that it was actually for linux videos i used to do like you know first look and impression videos of distributions basic tutorials on how to do stuff like from a uh, from a new user perspective because back then i was and um you know it's been a few years i've i've uh, had some more experience under my belt now and everything and uh i'm starting to really find that love that i used to have for linux it's starting to like come back a lot now you know i i still run it daily on on my laptop i actually run fedora 36 with the uh, gnome desktop environment again gnome gnome however you want to say it and today i just figured i would show you all how i set up my installation of fedora for the first time and if you have any tips and tricks on maybe some things you might do differently or you would want to add to my little list here just sign off in the comments below and i'll add it okay so i'm going to go and switch and folks uh, before anybody says anything here okay i want to just point out the elephant in the room here that yes this is a vm this is on a uh, windows host system here obviously because of course this is my main workstation this is what i do all of my editing all of my gaming all that stuff on but again I do, in fact, run Linux full time on my Lenovo Idea Pad, and Fedora with GNOME, KDE, whatever I want to throw on there works just fine here. Okay, so uh, this is what I always do whenever I install Fedora for the first time. Uh, normally, I'm a Debian guy, like you know, with the uh, Ubuntu, or um, even more so for Pop OS, but. I've always ran those. They've been what I've been comfortable with for years. And I always say that if you're comfortable, you're not doing something right. You know what I mean? So I, I wanted to try something different. And so far, guys and gals, Fedora 36 has been not only rock solid, but more stable for me on my system than Ubuntu or Manjaro, my second favorite, has ever been. So I think that should say something right there. Okay, so now this is going to get a little scary for new users out there and i do apologize because all of this stuff here you have to do in the terminal okay but i'm going to go back to my cam here for a second now i know that if you're coming from windows terminal usage might sound very scary but the thing is though folks is that even in windows you can use the command prompt or you can use something else called powershell and just like what we're going to be doing here in fedora linux we're going to you can do basically the same kind of thing in a command prompt or PowerShell in Windows, because instead of going through, you know, setting after setting after setting after setting, if you know exactly where something is that you want to do, why go through 15 different windows whenever you could go through a command prompt, put in one string of commands, hit enter, and it's done for you in about five seconds. You know what I mean? So. Uh, just again bear with me here i know it might seem scary but i promise you it's not okay just follow along it's not that hard all right everybody so this is going to be the same whether you're on the gnome version or a community spin like with kde all you want to do is this here okay you want to search for the terminal and here it is everybody right here now i can't remember the actual um keyboard shortcut right now for it so i had to just do this here the old-fashioned way fam hey we go, everybody hope that's a little bit easier for you all to see now okay now for this here we have to edit something called the the dnf configuration file and essentially folks all dnf is is essentially like apt or you know app to get what you would use in a debian based distribution like ubuntu or you would use you know pamac or or uh Yaourt or yay and arch to install stuff so normally to install something here in fedora you would do like you know sudo dnf install and then whatever the name of the package is right well by default it's limited to i think two or three parallel downloads and if you have a very very fast connection like personally uh, i have 400 meg down whenever you limit 
the downloads, like the max number of downloads for the uh, the applications you're trying to update or system updates, those updates can take forever, especially if you're on a very fast connection and you can handle more simultaneous downloads. So to fix that, all we're going to do is this here. We're going to go sudo nano. And a matter of fact, you know what? I think I might actually have it right here. Yeah, it's sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash dnf forward slash dnf dot conf hit enter then you got to go and uh, enter your uh, super user password there now see this little um this little pound sign here or this hashtag whatever you want to call it all this here means is that this is a comment so anything after this pound sign or hashtag again whatever you want to call it it will not be read by the configuration file in other words it says this stuff right here ignore it okay so what i'm going to do here folks is i'm going to go ahead and do another comment here and say let's see here uh speed up or yes speed up dnf and then i'm going to go ahead and copy all of this and put that right there. Now, max parallel downloads, I went ahead and left mine at 10. Uh, this gives me no issue at all, and it makes my installs for uh, updates, software updates, whatever, nice and speedy. Default yes equals true. This is really big for me. What it is is that you know how whenever you go to install software and there's that little selection to where it says yes or no to, you know, do what you want to do. Well, by default in Fedora, that is set to no. This little change here changes that to yes. And now keep cache. This is a big one, okay? I had to look this up because I wanted to make sure I told you guys and gals the right information here. But what this here does is that sometimes whenever you go to do your updates and everything, you have to, you know, go fetch that metadata and everything again before you can do updates, install software, all that jazz. All this here, uh, keep cache equals true, means is that it has a copy of all that metadata to where you can just install stuff and, of course, get those updates done a lot faster, okay? Now, one little quick thing about this max parallel downloads is that you got to keep in mind here, too, okay, folks, is that you might have really, really fast internet, right? But let's say your system might not be that new or it's a few years old, you know, and let's just say it's CPU might not be as fast as it could be, right? instead of making this 10 you might want to set it to a lower number like four or five because in other words here folks you don't want your downloads to saturate your hardware to where you can't do anything else while your system is updating its software you know what i mean so this here might be trial and error but if you have a system that was built in the last three or four years go ahead and max this out if you want to but for some of you out there it might be trial and error here okay so now that everything is actually written to the configuration file here to save it you want to just hit Control o to write it out file name to write go ahead and hit enter and that's it now go and hit Control x and then it takes you back to the um, terminal here okay now the cool thing is that all those changes we just made you actually don't have to um restart the system in order for them to take effect okay so for this here folks i already went ahead and did this but now we're going to install media codex this here will just give your system a lot easier time uh you know playing stuff on firefox opening up certain types of files like you know mp3s and all that jazz so just like before here you want to copy pasta all this stuff right here And as you can see here, folks, again, normally by default, the letter N here would actually be capitalized, showing you that no is the default selection. But since we went ahead and changed the default to yes, the Y is capitalized to show you all, hey guys, yes is default. And you know what? I thought I already did this, but I guess I didn't. So I'm going to go and hit enter here. Oh, okay. I guess I already did. So there we go. And now we are going to go ahead and uh, do a group update for our sound and video so we can actually tell Fedora, hey, use these updates, okay? I'm going to go and copy paste that right here. Going to hit yes again, and it's done. 
Alrighty here guys and gals, now we're going to enable flat pack su support. Now personally, flat pack is one of my all-time favorite, um, you know, means of installing software on any distribution. It allows you to have very current up-to-date software without breaking anything else because essentially folks, it's all sandboxed in its own little instance, you know what I mean? So in other words, uh, whenever you install a piece of software from a flat pack, it has all of its own dependencies and it's not going to interact with the system in any other way. So that's pretty cool. So in other words here, folks, I don't know if you've noticed this sometime, but on, on like a system like Arch or Ubuntu, uh, you go to install something, it installs a ton of different dependencies. And sometimes other software can also depend on those dependencies. And if you uninstall something, it might remove dependencies that other software uses to run. You know what I mean? So what again, what I like about Flatpak is that everything is self-contained and you can do with it what you will, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL in, into Firefox here, okay? There we go. Now, all you gotta do to install Flatpak here on Fedora is actually very simple. Once you click right here to install the Flathub repository file. Give it a second, it's already done. But I just click on that to open it. And as you'll see, it will open it up right here. Go ahead and hit install. Put in your password, whatever it might be. And just like that, folks, it's already installed. It's very quick. It's like, like it's a very, very small file. Alrighty. Now, this is where a lot of the, you know, the free and open source community is sort of kind of divided here. Okay. Um, you know, the Fedora repos has a ton of software in there. You could probably get about 90% of the work you need done with what's in the repositories for Fedora, you know. But the thing is, though, is that there's something called RPM Fusion to where it can essentially open up so much more software for you, whether it's free software or this might be kind of controversial to some of you out there, non-free stuff. In other words, like, you know, Chrome, all of that stuff here, okay? But what I love about open source and the free and open source movement is that it gives you the choice to use the tool that you need to get the job done, right? So whether it's, you know, if you want to stick to Firefox, go right ahead. If you want to use Chrome, go right ahead. Brave, go for it. Vivaldi, <laughs> it's there. Why not use it? You know what I mean? So we're going to go ahead and install the repos here for the RPM Fusion Free rep repository. I'm going to just copy and paste all of this right here. Going to go and hit yes and it's done and now we are going to go ahead and install the non-free re repository here okay and folks don't worry all this stuff will be in a pinned comment down below so if you can't follow along go ahead and go at your own pace and do it that way okay you can see rpm fusion non-free Gonna go and hit yes to confirm that. And there we go, folks. That is it. Now, now let's see if I can go find Chrome. All right. Oh, you can even do the unstable version here too for like the beta. That That's pretty cool. You got ungoogled Chrome, but let's go ahead and just get regular old Chrome here, shall we? And this here is an RPM package, so that's pretty cool. Alrighty, now let's see if I can get Discord, huh? And let's just see if this is offered as a... Okay, yeah, it is offered as a flat pack. It's kind of what I figured it would be, so okay, gonna hit install. And you know, people always say that flat pack applications... Uh, because they have all their own dependencies and everything in their own little protective bubble, if you want to call it that, they can sometimes take a long time to open up the first time. And sometimes, especially if you're on a mechanical uh, a mechanical hard drive, that can be true. But on my desktop here, I have a two terabyte NVMe drive, and same thing on my uh, laptop. It's a five twelve gig uh, Gen three NVMe SSD, and they take like a second longer or so to open up than a native application. You know what I mean? So really, not that big of a deal if you ask me. All right, folks, and it is done. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open to make sure it's gonna open up correctly.
Okay, personally, that didn't take any longer than my Windows installation to load up for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this here just real quick. And I'm going to relaunch it because it should open up a little bit quicker the second time. Oh. Uh, unless it was already running. You know, I'm going to see if it was running in the background because that was that was really, really, really fast. Aha. That will do it. All right, here, fam. One more time. Three, two, one. Yeah, not slow at all. So, guys, I think we can safely say that flat pack application opening times is pretty much on par with native apps now. Now, everybody, here's the thing, okay? I am by no means a Linux expert. I am not a Linux ninja. I might have a few years of experience with different dis distributions and all this stuff underneath my, my belt, but there's still a lot to learn. Uh, whenever you get into the nitty gritty with, with Linux stuff, you can either go deep in the weeds or just sit back and essentially just do your everyday tasks. You know what I mean? And what I would love to do is have a little series because I'm very passionate about Linux. I just never talk about it on this channel here. Again, I'm still debating if I want to even post this here on this channel or not. You know what I mean? But it's just one thing that I, I always have fun messing around with. And I would love to share that with you all. But the thing is, is that this channel here is more of a streaming channel. You know what I mean? So I don't know if I'm going to do this here or on a new channel that I actually already have made. So do me a favor, sign off in the comments below if you want to see more content like this here and we'll go from there. Okay. But I really hope this was fun for all of you out there. I, I love messing around with this stuff and I actually am really excited to get back to my roots here on YouTube and I'll catch you guys and gals next time.